Okay. We are in this uh, structural discipline. Uh, we have different levels. I don't know, uh, one, two, three, yeah. So four levels, it's fine because we are going to work with different uh, heights, yep. And um, I want you to uh, analyze this, okay? So this is what we are going to do today. So we're going, we're going to try to do this. What's this? Uh, this is the... Uh, it's not written. Insert text. This is the uh, Santa Caterina market. Okay. Santa Caterina Market. It's in Barcelona. It's in Spain. And well, I like it. So I decided that today we're going to do something like this. Um, do we know the, the architects? I think we should. Uh, every time we, we look at something, especially if it's a building that we, we like it, uh, we need to find out who the architect is. Uh, so Santa Is she Benedetta? Yep, she is. Well, uh, there are uh, Mirage Staglia. Uh, well, they were, I think they were married to each other. Enrique Mirage was an architect, uh, Benedetta was uh, his, uh, his uh, wife. And they were both architects and they both designed this. Uh, Enrique uh, passed away a few years ago, uh, but Benedetta, I think she was the one who finalized this, uh, this wonderful uh, building. Anyway, uh, what is this? It's a, is it a new idea? Is it something outstanding? Nobody has done this before. No, this idea is a it's common idea. So we have a classic building. It was a market. It was a market of the city. So it was a classic building, a 19th century uh, building, and they decided to do something different and something uh, that they used contrast. Okay, so when you are uh, uh, refurbishing an existing building, you can either adapt to the style of the building or you can do something completely different. So they, they did the, the, the latter, not the former. Uh, so they created something completely different so completely different so they created this is a classic building with uh, everything straight with uh, these classic orders arches and uh, these uh, balusters okay so this is a classic language and they decided that they were going to something completely new and they uh, came up with this idea of this organic architecture covering the the classic building so now the building doesn't have a roof or they removed the old roof of the building and they wanted to create something because this is a market and for market for markets, we need something that it's flexible. So we don't want uh, columns in the middle of the market. So we want an uh, open space uh, so that we can have anything inside the market. So we have this, but uh, tomorrow it can be different. Okay, if we decide that this, is, this layout is not uh, good because we want to change this, we remove those shops and we create something because the building is flexible enough. So this is the idea. Um, and did they uh, do this from scratch again? Okay, so what a great idea. Were they the, the first ones to, to do this? No, they were not. And, uh, but they didn't even uh, hide the, the sources because every uh, one who studies in Barcelona, so if you're an architect from Barcelona, you have to copy Gaudi. I think I talked about Gaudi uh, last time, but uh, well, so if you look at uh, Gaudi, uh, Park, well, well, the park well. Okay, so this Gaudi, uh, he has two main ideas. First, he wants to work with the, 
lines that are not straight at all. He has tilted columns and everything is organic. Everything is like uh, nature. So you won't find straight lines in Gaudi's work. And uh, finally, he is working with these uh, tiles, with these uh, color tiles. Okay, so with these two ideas, they came up with this. And they didn't find the, the sources. Uh, everybody knows that they are copying uh, the, the shapes and the colors from this great architect, Gaudi, who is the author of uh, Gaudi Sagrada Familia. I think I told you last week that this is probably the most uh, famous building uh, that is under construction today. And it was started when Gaudi was alive, uh, like uh, 100 years ago. Then he passed. Well, he was uh, run over uh, by a tram because he was, uh, he was a genius and he was always thinking of uh, what he was going to do, whatever. And a tram ran over him and he died 100 years ago. And it was stopped for, for 80 or 90 years. And now they, are, they want to finalize it. They have funding for, for this and they are completing this, uh, this incredible work and it's already there. So you can uh, look at the inside and it's outstanding, it's, uh, it's outstanding. So I recommend you go there whenever we are able to travel again, but it's something outstanding. But uh, look at this, look at these pillars or look at these columns. They are like uh, branches of a tree. So we have the tree trunk and then we have the branches. Look at this. So here we can see that these columns, they have the same idea. So they are like uh, trees with different branches. And then we have the colors to cover the with these ceramic tiles. They are very traditional there in Barcelona, these kind of ceramic tiles. Uh, so that's it, copy. And by copying, you will find your own because this is not a, a literal copy of uh, any of the Gaudi's work. No, it's not. It's something different. But we can see that they have learned from, from this guy. And I think I showed you those buildings. Okay, so even they copied this idea of this uh, shape of this uh, roof like this. Okay, so look at this. So we can find some, it's similar. Okay, so they copied Gaudi. So if you, are, if you want to uh, be an architect in, in Barcelona, eventually you have to copy uh, Gaudi, either the shapes, the colors, whatever, but you have to do that. And, uh, but now we, we have to build this. It's not just a nice rendering or it's, uh, we have to understand the structure. So this is what we are going to do today. It's not just uh, because with Revit or with other software, you can do this, but now we can, we have to build this. So we have to provide the constructor with plans and dimensions, and we have to calculate structures. Okay, so this is what we're going to uh, learn today. Uh, physical models are always uh, impressive, okay, because you see what it takes. I mean, we have the old building here. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I, mean, I, I know that uh, you are there, Alex, don't worry. Uh, I mean, uh, you see this shape that by uh, making this physical model, yeah, well, a model, this is the, the goal of, of uh, making a model that you get to understand how the building will be, uh, the real building will be. Okay, so if the model stands, the real building it will stand most likely. And you have to find structurally what you have to do. And it's not that difficult. If you analyze uh, this, it looks weird. It looks like, uh, okay, how can we do this? It's, it's almost impossible. But if we analyze, uh, and this is a Revit file, if we analyze this, it's not that difficult, okay? So we have uh, these structural elements here in this direction. They are not straight, they are uh, like curves. Uh, these uh, trees or these columns here are the main columns. So we have a column here, if we look at the plan. 
Okay, so we have columns here outside. But look at this, the structure is not that weird. We have a line of columns here, and then we have another line of columns there. And then we have the building, which is a rectangle. So we might have like an organic shape like this, but if we look at the plan, it's not that uh, crazy, okay? There are structural lines here. So clearly we have a structural line here with these columns, and then there is another structural line here with that column. And uh, at the end, we have these elements holding this huge beam that is uh, going in this direction. And then in the perpendicular direction, we have other uh, beams. So we have the second order of uh, structural elements, those arches or these, it's not an arch, it's, well, we have this structure. And finally, uh, we have the third order, which is the beam system in this direction, okay? So if we look at the plan, uh, there will be structural elements here and there. So there will be the main uh, horizontal, the main uh, horizontal or structural elements are here. This is the first one, and this is the second one. Okay. Then we have another. Uh, structural elements, probably. Uh, so there are other structural elements in this direction. And the size or the width of those elements is uh, less because they are secondary structural elements and we have more. Okay. And finally, uh, we have the, the beam systems. So the beam systems are uh, even smaller than those. And we have beam systems in this direction. So we can make it orange and a little. And we have a lot of them. So this is it, um, main structural elements, the blue ones, the secondary structural elements, the red ones, and then the, beeps, the beam systems uh, connecting these two structural elements. And it's always the same. So regardless of the shape, uh, if we want to cover a long span without uh, columns inside, um, we need this. So we need the, the line of the columns. We have columns here with these black dots are the, the structural columns. We have a huge beam in this direction. Then we have this uh, shape. So this shape is made of different ribs, as you can see, of uh, structural elements. And finally, we have the beam system. So once we have understood what we want, uh, we, can, we can make it. And now we are going. We are going. We are, we are going to work with uh, Revit. Uh, so first, uh, let's start with level zero. Uh, we have the four levels. So let's start with twelve. Four. Uh, the heights are not relevant. I want to show you how to work with uh, with those shapes and how to adapt structural elements to these weird uh, shapes. And we are going to use the same uh, features that we we explained last week: beams, uh, columns. Uh, trusses and beam systems. So this is what we are going to use this in this structure. We have all these elements. This is what we are going to use. So let's start with level zero. Uh, we have to work with grids. Uh, so this grid uh, F, no, let's make it one. And what is the distance between two, grid, two grids? Mm. Well, as you see, we have a huge span. So let's say yeah, 120 feet. Okay, so imagine that this span 
between these two structural elements is 120 feet. I don't know, I'm just making up the, the distance that it might be. And uh, then we would need the, the perpendicular uh, grid. Okay, so we have, um, yeah, so we have this, there are four, we are going to work with just two uh, lines and, and that's it. And then we have this and the, the distance between these two structural elements, I don't know if this is uh, 120, this can be, uh, let's say 12. So we have another grid element. Fernando, what was that first distance? Uh, this is annotate. One hundred and twenty feet. Okay, thank you. Okay, and now the other distance we can copy. And twelve, I think it's not enough. So let's say eighteen. So I think 18 feet is fine. Okay, I don't know how many uh, elements we have, but uh, let's do this. You can, if you want more, you can continue this. Oh, but uh, just, I'm going to undo because I forgot to name this as A, and now we can copy 18, 18, 18. okay, 120 and 18 feet. 18 okay um, if we follow the the project uh, we can see that where's the plan if I remove this we can see how the the columns they are not steel columns okay so when we have these round columns like this uh, usually we have a structural uh, concrete uh, so we can use in revit if we go to structural columns uh, we have shapes okay so we only have steel so i'm going to insert a uh, family of uh, columns and uh, Doric ugh, metal rectangular round column. Okay, let's insert a round column. Uh, so the files. I think we have to, ah, we have to, yeah. If we are working with a structural template, we have to upload the structural columns. And yeah, that's much better because here we have wood, uh, there are steel columns and precast concrete. Let's find out what we have here. Well, uh, and we have a concrete round, a concrete, we have this with cap. Okay, let's uh, make it simple. So let's uh, select a concrete round column. There you go. And then uh, here, uh, the diameter is uh, 12 inches. Structure columns. Okay, so with this, uh, can, do we have any other? Okay, you, you have more. We have uh, 12 inches, 18 inches, 24 inches. Let's make it 24. And uh, we can do this or 
uh, we can uh, select the, the grids. Let me find out what we have done here. Yeah, because on the 3D view, uh, we don't see the, the columns. Why? It's level, so it's the, okay. So let's go to level uh, 12 and this. Okay, so make sure that you start on level zero. At the top level is level 12 and the base offset is zero. And the same thing, now we can copy uh, these columns because on the 3D view, where are the columns in the 3D view? Oh, it's here. Well, uh, when I went to uh, load in a family, the only yep. thing that was there was structural precast. Yeah, this is because in the, you have the 2021. Yeah, I'm on the lab computer. Yep, because this is what I told you at the beginning. Uh, we have to download all these uh, elements, okay? Uh, because they are not by default, they are not in Revit 2021. The IT guys uh, uploaded uh, this version of Revit and they didn't know that, well, I didn't know either because I, I found out today that you have to install this, this content. Uh, what I can do is to, uh, if you want to work on the on the Revit file now, I can, uh, but let me do something because look at this, look where the, the column is and these are my levels. Uh, so I think I we need to move either the column or or this. Feet. Feet. Oh, what the hell is going here? Well, I don't mind. Uh, so I'm going to uh, close to save this. Save as a project, uh, class work two. Still. This is 23, 21. Okay, I think these are all the families that we need. We need the round structural columns. And concrete round, level zero, level 12. And this is not here. Uh, this is what we are going to uh, work with, so I'm going to save this. Save this project. And I'm going to upload this on Canvas. In files. Uh, And okay, if you want to work now in the computer lab, you can download this file. It's in files. Uh, 
uh, Revit files. And this is today's, uh, yeah, February the 23rd. Um, download this Revit file and start working on it. So you have all the families there. Okay. So we are back. Uh, vertical grids, uh, one, two, horizontal grids, A, B, C, D, uh, 120, uh, the distance between these two vertical ones, and 18, the distance between the horizontal ones. We have inserted uh, a structural concrete wall. Uh, we go from level zero to level 12, and we can copy this here. And then we can copy one. We don't even know. Uh, we don't even need. Um, well, let's do this. Yeah. So now on the three D view. Yeah, I want to watch this. Okay, kind of. So this is it from level zero to level 12. We have uh, structural columns and um, we're going to do something else now. So let's copy this grid uh, 24. And we will copy all these columns here. Okay. Now I have to rename. This is not uh, F. Three. One. Okay, now I have changed the, this is one, this is uh, two, and this is three, three. but yes, uh, doesn't matter. Because I want two different spans. I want span uh, like this. Uh, this is uh, annotate 24. Okay, so I want, I want a 24 span and a, 20, a 120 foot span. And then this is uh, 18. <clears throat> Why? Well, because we are going to uh, try different uh, options uh, to do this. OK, so what is the first option? Uh, we are going to work with the uh, trusses in on this level, on level 0. So we can uh, insert. Uh, no, sorry, we can work with the structure because I, we have already uh, inserted trusses. So I work with the structural trusses, this uh, flat truss, the flat one. And I'm going to draw a truss from this point to that point. There you go. Do not copy because we are going to change this. Okay, so we are, uh, in fact, we're going to do something completely different. So let's open the south elevation. Uh, all these uh, level should be here. Thank you. 
Okay, this is not important, but <clears throat> just to make sure that we are uh, looking at levels and, uh, and the elevation. The detail is fine. So we have this ugly um, structural truss and we have to do something different here. Uh, so what can we do? Uh, we are going to edit the family. Okay, so we select the truss and we just edit the family. And we have this. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do something radical. I'm going to get rid of all these elements and I'm going to load this into the project. I override the existing version. Okay. So now this is the this is a truss. Okay, so I have removed all the elements and we have only the top core. Uh, why do I want to do this? Uh, well, you will find out immediately. Uh, but we have to understand what we have done here. You see that we have horizontal trusses and we are looking at the south elevation. So we are looking the, at the south elevation. We are looking from this point upwards. And we have these planes, A, B, C, D, E. So those are uh, grids. And it's not just for having an intersection here. We are going to use those grids as work planes because we are going to place different trusses at different grid lines, okay? Um, and the shape of this truss is uh, what is relevant now. Um, now let's work with architecture and let's uh, insert a model line. And now the first thing is, uh, what is the current work plane? Uh, we don't have a work plane. Uh, and since we are working in grids A, B, C, D, so we can select one of the grids, not the one, two, or three, but we have to select grid A, for example. Grid A, okay. And now we want to do something very simple. Uh, it's uh, the, where we, we can work with a line or a rectangle, but we are going to use uh, arches. Okay, so we are going to work with an arc. And uh, I don't want it here. I want to start from this point. This is the first point. This is the second. And here, this is the third point. So it's, uh, let's say here. Okay, so we have this line. Uh, now the goal is to adapt this truss to this line. Can we do it? Yeah, we can. Uh, so we have to edit profile. Remember that we edited family, so we, we uh, got rid of all the vertical or diagonal webs. We don't want that in this case, but now we have to edit profile. So the profile is a top cord and a bottom cord. Um, so we select because the bottom cord is gonna be there, but we're going to delete it. Uh, let's select the top cord. And now here we can pick lines, okay? So we, we uh, have to make this line that we have already done, or we have already uh, created a top cord, and then we have to get rid of this one. So we have to select this and delete it, and delete it. Fernando, after you finish this, can you just show me where you got that line tool for the arc again? Okay, I'll do it and then I will do it again. Don't worry. Thank you. Uh, so we have, uh, I don't know, but I don't know what I have done before, but I think if we select yes, okay, this is what I want. Okay. And now, as you can see, we have two cords. Uh, if you uh, click here, because we don't want a bottom cord, we just have uh, this arch uh, that is adapted to the shape that we have already created. And on the 3D view, we have this. We have the, the steel beam but with this shape. I'll do it again. South elevation. Uh, we have this uh, terrible, well, terrible with this uh, rat truss. So we're going to change this. We don't want uh, diagonal or vertical webs. Uh, so we select this. Uh, edit, uh, edit profile, no, edit family now. 
well, we have, I have already edited that family, so I didn't undo uh, that much. Uh, you have to just uh, do this, uh, load into the project, override the existing version. And now we have just the two chords, the, the top chord and the bottom chord. Now I have to draw the arch. Uh, so it's an architecture, model line. We have to pick a plane. And uh, since we are uh, working in uh, horizontal grids, we have to pick either grid A, B, C, or D, or E, whatever. Let's pick grid A. Okay. And now uh, we can use this uh, menu here to draw. We can draw lines or... But now we are going to do something simple. It's the start and uh, radius. So we click here and we click this first point, the second point, and the third point. Escape. Uh, uh, yeah, so yeah. You got it now? Okay, so now on the 3D view, we have the trash here and we have this line. And now we have to adapt this truss to this line. So working on the south elevation again, we select the truss, we edit profile, and we get rid of this uh, top chord here. And we select top chord. And now we have to uh, click here, these pick lines. Okay, so uh, whatever uh, we pick now, it becomes the top chord. So let's select this, let's do this, and click OK, and there you go. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Oh, and we are not done yet because we have to remove the bottom chord here. Okay. It's not removing it, it's there, but uh, it's not shown because we have to click here. Okay, uh, so now we can copy. So once we have the shape that we want, uh, we can, uh, oh, it's not shown on level zero. Is it shown? No, this is level one of the structural truss, uh, which means this, it's level 12. Okay, it's here. So now we can copy this as many times as we need. Okay, so we have uh, arches here. And now we want to create a beam system because you remember that the goal is uh, we, we already have this structural, well, we have the structural line for columns. Uh, we haven't created the, the beam yet. We are going to do it uh, right away. Uh, then we have these uh, arches. So those are the arches. Now we are doing this bay. Okay, So we are uh, focusing. As you can see, we have three bays. We have this one, the small one. This is our 24 uh, foot span. This is our uh, 120 foot span. And then there's another one here. Okay, So uh, we are working with this bay here. And this is classic because if we, uh, if you have studied uh, history of architecture, uh, if you look at the Gothic cathedral plan, uh, okay. So in this kind of uh, Gothic cathedrals, what do we have? We have a, a, a narrow bay, and then we have the, the nave a long bay and then another one here okay so this is classic architecture so we are not inventing anything so we just have a huge space and then we have smaller space here and that worked well works well because uh, the proportions are are fine uh, in in this gothic architecture we have this which is double uh, that one usually it's double okay so those are proportions that go well uh, together and here you can see the structural element and the beautiful thing of uh, these uh, Gothic cathedrals is that if we analyze the structure, 
uh, we see that I don't want to structure mathematics. Okay, That's what I was looking for. Okay, so we see this. Uh, we have the base, we have the huge bay here, we have the small base. Here we have one, two, three, five, so it's a huge. Uh, and all the structural elements are outside. So we want a bay that is empty so that we can see the light through those uh, wonderful uh, glass works or, or clear stories. And, and, and that's it. So this, if you analyze this, it's a Gothic building. Even they have structural elements outside the, the building. And they, these elements are also holding uh, this roof. Okay, so it's, so the shapes are different, but the idea is the, is the same. Okay, so again, copy. Um, you don't have to do a, a, or create a Gothic uh, cathedral anymore, but uh, copy the, the idea. Uh, in proportions. Uh, so if you analyze uh, masterpieces of architecture, you just copy proportions, materials, colors, whatever, but copy. Um, so this is our first bay, uh, but now we, we, we didn't have this structural element. So we have to go to level 12. And on that level 12, we need a structure, we need a beam. Um, so let's work with a beam from this point to this point here. Okay, and now let's copy. No, I want to copy the beam. No, it's not there. So now copy from this to this. There you go. Okay, so we have the main structural element. Then we have the secondary structural element. And now we need a beam system. So when we have uh, a square, because in, uh, in the plan, well, it's not a square. We have rectangles here. If we have rectangles, then we can uh, create beam systems. So let's select structure, beam system. And now again, we have to pick uh, supports. Okay, so we can pick uh, supports here. And one, two, three, four. Uh, we have to trim because they are, this is not acceptable. So we have to trim those supports. So we have to make sure that it's a square. We have to select the beam direction. So we want uh, those structural elements from this arch to this. Okay, so the beam direction is here. So it's things, yes, the correct one. So you see that the beam direction is parallel to, to this beam. Uh, we have to select 3D. And do you think uh, Revit is good enough to adapt the beam system to, uh, to a curve? Let's find out. Yes. Okay. And now if we select the beam system, I think we can, now oh, the beam type, yeah, we can select something smaller, even smaller. This is too small. No. Uh, why is the meeting not going to Let's do this. And now, um, well, usually we don't want this because uh, let me select, we have a fixed number. 
uh, with number of lines, what if we uh, do the fixed uh, distance? Uh, four. Well, it's the same. So let's do the fixed number, but let's make it more, say eight or 10. Yeah. Fernando, I have a quick question. Yep. Um, can you just go over how you got it to be curved, um, like the beam system? Yeah, you want me to do it again? Uh, just that one step I have, the system is just flat. Okay, I'll do it again and let me know if it works. Uh, so I'm going to do the, the next one, okay? Uh, beam system, uh, peak supports, one, two, three, four, trim, one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, you have to, you need this 3D uh, here, and you need to change the beam direction to this. And if it's uh, the right beam direction, if it's, uh, if you have the 3D here, it should work. Uh, uh, does it, it works work? now. Thank you. Okay. Okay, but now we have to be careful because this is not acceptable. I mean, if we have changed the properties of this, uh, we don't have to do this. Or we either uh, change everything here and we select the name, the same uh, uh, this and the same number. I think it was ten. Okay. So this is very important. If we look at the plan view. Everything has to be connected and, and on the same line. Okay, so this is very important. So I recommend you uh, select uh, the beam system and then copy. Because otherwise we have to adjust uh, the same parameters and now have this. Okay, so this is uh, the this is the basic. We have trusses, we have a beam in this direction, and then we have beams uh, curve or arches in, in the other direction, and then we have a beam system uh, connecting everything. And it's important that this connection is like this, so we don't have uh, different distances or different number of beams. So it, this, is, this has to be very accurate because otherwise it won't uh, work from the structural point of view. We're not uh, talking about structures here, but from the structural point of view, it won't work uh, well. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm going to do something different now. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, something different because this is fine. Okay, we have uh, we can have beam systems, not just flat beam systems, but we have this curved uh, beam systems, so that makes our life much easier. Uh, but what if we want an overhang? So if we want an overhang, um, what would I do? So first, uh, we can. Um, I think I have to go to level thirty six. So on level 36, I can select uh, this beam and I want to extend this beam. How much? Uh, well, this is another rule of thumb that works well for overhangs. Um, so this is forever. It's not just for this exercise. If you want to create a feasible overhang, even if you don't know anything about structures, okay? But um, if there's a beam like this, and we have two uh, columns, uh, 
here and here. If this is If this is L, the span the length, okay, the overhang works perfectly if it, if it is L divided by three. This is the perfect distance for overhangs. Okay, if our L was, um, what is this? Uh, it was 18, I think. Yeah, it was 18. So 18 divided by three, it's uh, six. Okay, so it would be, it would be great if we extend uh, this, um, line here uh, six and then we can align okay that works from the structural point of view if we want an overhang without any uh, support here uh, then it works well but uh, uh, we need another truss here Okay, so we have to do the same, or we can uh, well, we can copy this. Yeah, so let's copy this one here. And now on the three D view, mm, we don't need a column here because this is an overhang. And if we want structure beam system uh, peak supports, one, two three, four, uh, we have to trim, trim, I think I didn't, well, I picked that one, so I have to connect this and trim, okay. Now 3D, I have to change the beam direction and I have to click okay, yeah. so that's an overhang. Oh, uh, well, now we have to change this, this beam system now. It's 10, and it was the American standard. Okay, so this is a nice overhang, and we are meeting the requirements. Does it have to be a three a, or one third? <sighs> Kind of. I mean, this is the optimum, but if it's uh, slightly more or slightly less, uh, nobody will notice. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to show you something different because we are, imagine that in this example, as you can see, we don't have, uh, I don't know if we can see, but they are not, we don't have parallel lines. Uh, the border is not parallel to the original facade. Why? Well, because it, yeah, I think in this, this is a plan view. Okay, so you see that it's not uh, parallel to these straight lines, so it's something different. Um, well, that goes well with this idea of having like bands or strips. They are different uh, lengths, and if, even the, the shape, they are not flat at the end. So let's do this. So here we have a regular, so we have extended this grid, and uh, for y and e f having this is important because uh, now we when we are selecting planes we are working with shapes and we are working with elevations so we need to select the, the right grid okay so we need an order we need one two three a b c d because now with with this order we know where we are uh, so this 
Okay, so we have done this overhang here and we're going to do something different there. And we're going to use uh, a different tool, which is the ref plane, reference plane. We are not using grids, we are using reference plane. So let's uh, pick or click on reference plane. And now we are going to draw a reference plane like that. But uh, it doesn't work if you don't name this. So putting, uh, giving names to things is one of the most difficult things that human beings have to do. So let's say this is a reference plane one. I'm not uh, good at giving names. Um, uh, but at least, uh, yeah, if we have 100 uh, reference planes, <laughs> If we have one, two, three, four, we, we don't uh, understand what kind of, here we only have one or we are going to have one or two, so that's fine. But uh, yeah, giving names, it's, it's something difficult. We are going to uh, work with this uh, reference plane now. And um, okay, on the south elevation, I want to create this model line But this model line, uh, where is it now? It is, uh, okay, it's not in grid A. So here you have the placement uh, plane, it's not grid A. So we have to uh, do this and we have to select reference plane. Okay, so now we are working on that plane. And now we know that if we pick, uh, oof, here. And there. Oh, I I, I want to uh, create an arch, not a line. Okay, so it's uh, here. And here. Now I want to adapt this to the shape. Okay, there you go. I okay, it's it's over there. Okay. Uh, so now on level zero, I want to work with this reference plane. So I have to insert uh, another truss. We can't copy because this is, has a different shape. Okay, so we can't copy a previous truss. Uh, so here I can trace the truss here. And on the south elevation, yeah, we have to do the same. So we have this truss, we have to edit profile. We have to get rid of this. And um, we have to work with the top cord. We have to pick this. And um, I think I need to use the, yeah, I need to use the 3D view because on the south elevation, we have a lot of things. Use the 3D view here. Click, and there you go. We have this curved but it's not parallel to the other ones. Okay, so now I select this. I don't want to bottom cord. And on level 36, I can uh, extend this beam to the reference plane here. And I can extend the other beam to the reference plane there. And now I need a beam system. A beam system. <clears throat> uh, peak supports. One, two, three, four. Now trim. Uh, beam direction. Uh, well, I have to change this. It's 10. 
and it's the American standard. Click OK. Never is slightly off axis. Well, if we were calculating the structure, that would be an issue that we are not calculating structure, so nobody will notice. Okay, so I think it's uh, it looks good now. So we have the structural elements, the the columns, and uh, we have all the beams here. We have the overhang, so this is a straight overhang, and we have an overhang here that it's not straight. It's a curve, it's tilted, so it's... it's okay. Um, what's next? Okay, so now we need this span. Okay, so we, we have done this bay, which is the, the, the narrow one, but now we have this long span, this wide bay uh, that we have to cover. And we are going to do it in a higher level. So we are going to extend those uh, columns. Oh, by the way, do you have any questions? Are you following me? Are you lost or are you still there? Did you redo yeah. the uh, curving of that last truss we did? Do you want me to redo it? I didn't get to follow along very well. OK, so let me. And do where are we? Uh, some, some to fit. Um, line. Okay, that was the starting point. Uh, did you? Uh, do I have to do the the reference plane again, or you know how to do it? I got but, the reference plane, but. I don't yep. know if you adapted it in any way. I, I think I missed a section of that. But if you're just at where you just drew in the line and started them there. Okay, so don't worry. Uh, we have the reference plane. I mean, can be either uh, any reference plane. So I didn't have any. Okay, so uh, okay. this angle, I mean, it's uh, whatever we, whatever you feel like. It's something that it's not parallel to, to this grid line. And so it's reference plane, reference plane number one. If we want to uh, create like an arch now, uh, we need um, we need a, an elevation view. Uh, this south view is this one. So the problem with the south view is that we are uh, looking at all these grid lines before the reference plane. So if you want to use the north view, maybe it's easier. So let's use the north view now. Uh, what's the problem with the north view? Uh, I don't see the level, I don't see other elements now. Why? Well, the elevation symbol has disappeared. I don't know why. But it least works. The north. Uh, 
okay, let's work with the south because it's uh, it's already there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, what are, uh, we have to uh, pick this model line, and now uh, sometimes when we uh, pick line, there's a menu here. So what uh, plan, do you, uh, what uh, uh, plane do you want to pick? But if we don't have this, don't worry because we only have this placement plane. Okay, so here you have all the grids that are uh, parallel to the screen. Now we are on the south elevation. So we can place things in one of the uh, these grids A B C D F or on the reference uh, plane. So let's select reference plane. And now, uh, yeah, if you click here, you see the the line. Uh, so we have to select this uh, radius or this R, uh, this circle again. And yeah, we have to select this uh, middle point. that one and now we have to do this in the middle of the in the middle of this uh, arch we click this and it's there it's there but it is tilted okay so it's not parallel uh, this line that we have already we have created is not parallel to the grid lines. <clears throat> uh, so now we have to go to level zero and we have to place a truss following this plane. So let's go to structure, uh, truss, and from this point to that point. We have a truss. We don't see the truss here, I don't know why, but we see that on the 3D view. Okay, so on the 3D view, we have the truss and we have this line here. Select this, edit profile. We have to get rid of the current. Uh, a top chord, delete it. Now select top, pick this line. You pick this line now. Okay. And uh, delete the bottom chord. And there you go. It's telling me I can't create it for some reason. You can create the the what the plane or the or the truss. The truss. Okay, um, I'm going to continue, but uh, we, we are going to do the same. So let's try uh, with the long bay or the this uh, span. We were we are going to do the same. So try to do it here, and if you don't, uh, get back to me, and I'll help you out. Uh, okay, so this is it. And finally, we have to extend those beams. I think we can use the align tool, this, and I'm going to extend this a little. And now can we use the align? No, we can't. Okay, we extend this one, we extend that one, and uh, now for the beam system, uh, we have to select structure, beam, and uh, pick sports, one, two, three, four, trim, Beam direction, 3D, okay. And lines cannot, don't intersect. Okay, because I didn't trim these and these and these and that. 
There you go. And this is 10. And the American standard. Okay. So now we are going to do the same, but with this long span and just uh, changing the shape of these uh, trusses. So they are not going to be arches. They are going to be something uh, different, more creative. But first, uh, let's do this a little higher. Uh, I think it will work better. So we select all those columns and those columns here. So the top level, let's make it level 24. Okay, so on the south elevation, uh, we have the this bay and then we have this huge bay here. Uh, but as you can see in the section, okay, this inside. So we have a shape that it's not, uh, Okay, we have this shape, actually. Okay, um, don't go crazy. I mean, this is too. This is probably too much. If we force these kind of shapes like this, probably there will be a mistake. So don't go crazy. Let's try to work with uh, some curves like this, and then we will work with these uh, trusses and then with the beam systems. Okay, so let's uh, do this. And now it's up to you. I'm going to. Uh, show you how to do it, but the shape is up to you. So we can uh, model line. Now we are not in the reference plane. Now we are in grid A, for example. And let's uh, let's start from this point. Oh, and uh, let's select uh, this grid A, but I want you to explore this, this spline. Okay, spline, it's a curve. Uh, it's a smooth curve that passes through or right. So you have to select the, the points. So this is a, a nice tool. Uh, so you can create uh, curves uh, like this. I told you, don't go crazy. Okay, so we have this shape. Uh, the good thing of spline is that by uh, editing these points, uh, you can change the, the shape of the, of the curve. Okay. Uh, so this is on grid A. Uh, so I'm not going to copy this. I'm going to do something even more radical. And I'm going to uh, work with the south elevation again. I'm going to model another line. I'm going to pick grid B. And starting from the first point, sorry, using a, uh, using a, uh, uh, it's a spline again. I'm in grid B. And starting from the same point, I'm going to draw a different um, a different line. So if we look at the 3D view now, yep, yeah, we see how. We have two lines, different lines in two different grid lines on level zero. Uh, well, we don't see this, but on the 3D view, top view, yep. We see that uh, they are starting on the column and structurally this is uh, relevant because we are not, uh, this is not floating. So it starts on this, on this column and it ends on this column. So that's good. But uh, the shape is uh, is weird. 
So what are we going to do now? We are going to create trusses here and we're, we're going to adapt the truss, the top port to these lines. So let's do it on level zero. I can create, we're working with the uh, trusses or with grid lines A and B. So I'm going to create the truss from this point to this point and another one from this to this. So if we look at the 3D view now, yep, yeah, we have the trusses here. Now we are going to modify this. Edit profile, get rid of this top cord, uh, select the pick line tool. We pick uh, this, uh, let's see the top cord. Uh, we click OK. And whoop, there you go. Fernando, so when you click on your truss right after you draw it initially and it's just a flat line, it gives you the option to edit the profile? Yep, edit the profile. All right, because mine, all mine says when I click on the truss is edit family. Oh, so you don't have a profile? No, it's not popping up for me. Mm -hmm. um, but do you have the rest of the icons here or? I just have edit family, highlight analytical and change references grayed out. Uh -huh. um, are you in this discipline? Are you in a structural discipline? Um, one second. Should be. Yeah, I am. So this is a structural discipline. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know. Um, let me finish this and then you will have time to share the screen. Uh, okay. Because we are almost done here. All right. Uh, I'm going to finalize this. I'm going to create the beam system and, and that's it. Okay, okay so I was uh, editing, editing this profile. Again, I delete this cord, top, pick this, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work because the the line is not that it's too complicated but it goes crazy lines cannot intersect each other the headlines currently intersect continue okay i'm going to do it again level zero Truss, here, 3D view, edit profile, delete, top chord, this one, Me cago en la leche. Well, if it doesn't work, I can always copy the truss Okay. And now on the 3D view. I do have this, get rid of this. Well, do not get rid of this one. And what if I edit profile now? And, uh, okay, so you can always edit this profile. So that is slightly different than the other one. Can get rid of this line. 
Okay, because the idea is that, yeah, we have two different shapes here. Okay, so it doesn't work. Uh, why doesn't it work? Well, because we are forcing uh, the software too much, so we are doing weird things, uh, adapting trusses to weird shapes. Okay, uh, but at least this is what I wanted to show you. We have two different shapes. Uh, they are completely, so we, do, we don't have an arch. We don't have, so we can do whatever we feel like. And if we are on the 36 level, uh, this column, it was up to level 24. Okay, so we have to go to level 24, uh, view, plan views, floor plan, level 24 here, okay. And on level 24, I need a beam. So I need the same beam that I have on level 12 here on level 24. Okay. And now let's try to create the beam system. Uh, we pick support, one, two. Make sure that you select the beam on level 24. This one, trim. Go. Uh, the beam direction is the short one. It's a 3D, so if Revit is able to do this, that would be a miracle. Well, kind of. Uh, we need more, six is not enough, so let's make it 20. Yeah. Or even more. Okay. Um, so what's next? Uh, try to complete all the trusses. Try to create an overhang with a re with another reference plane, and see what happens. Okay. But this Fernando, is, yep. It's telling me that uh, it can't make W shaped beams. Yeah. I try to. This is the same thing, but with both trusses or just the, with one of them? Just with one. Well, actually, both of them. I haven't tried both. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't know why. Probably it's, uh, it's because this shape. Uh, because this is an I beam. Okay, so the shape of this beam, it's a, if you try to do this with something uh, square or rectangular, probably it will work, but we are forcing that shape too much. Mm, the shape is not relevant here. The relevant thing is that you can do this. So if the shape doesn't, I mean, the shape of, uh, of this line that you have done, maybe this line is too complicated, and you cannot do this. So try to start with something simple. Okay, okay. so try to start with a spline, the south elevation. If we uh, go to architecture, model line, uh, spline in grid uh, C, Okay, so try something simple, just like this. 
and uh, because this is a this is not as complicated as the, as this one. So if it works with this shape, then you can always, uh, as I did before, once you have the the shape, you can uh, go to the south elevation. Uh, you can edit the profile of the shape that of the beam that you have already selected, and then you can twist it more. I'll try that. Okay, so try uh, a basic shape, and then if it works, then try to uh, edit that shape, and then try to do something more complicated. And if it doesn't work, email me with your file, and I'll open it, and I'll figure out how to make it work, and then I will uh, record the tutorial, and I will send it back to you. Okay. Um,